right here is good. Thank you. Yep. Is everyone all set? Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to our public health campus for the Erie County Department of Health on the Erie County Medical Center campus. Uh, I'm Erie County Executive Mark Polenkars and I'm pleased to be joined here today uh, by our Health Commissioner, Dr. Gail Burstein, as well as three members of the Judiciary, the Administrative Judge uh, for the Western New York Region, uh, Judge Kevin Carter, as well as the Chief Judge for the Buffalo City Court, uh, Judge Jahar Pridgen, as well as Buffalo City Court Judge Phil Dabney to make an important announcement regarding uh, lead prevention in our area and cases that are presently pending before the Buffalo City Court. Uh, we're also joined by Karen Gambino from Deaf Access Services. We'll be providing the American Sign Language today, so thank you, Karen. Uh, today is a very good day to ensure the safety of the residents of our community. Uh, as we've known for quite some time, uh, lead poisoning is an issue in our homes due to the age of the homes and the building stock that we have in specifically the city of Buffalo, but in other parts of Erie County as well. Uh, for many years, Erie County has a, a robust lead prevention program to ensure the safety of individuals who may come in contact with lead in paint, uh, in, uh, on walls or in windows, in dust from uh, raising windows, uh, because of the age of the housing stock. As we said, the average housing stock in our area is older than um, 1977, in which lead paint was in all likelihood in most of the paints in the buildings in our area. So we have buildings, unfortunately, that in some ways are dangerous to the residents, especially the youngest residents. Lead poisoning is a particularly insidious disease that affects the youngest of us, are the children, toddlers, babies, because it, it has a huge impact on their neurological development at that important time of their lives where their brains are still uh, developing. So for many years now, we've been working to get rid of lead in the homes of our region. Uh, but unfortunately, we've not been able to address every single matter. Uh, and so we continue to have a strong lead prevention program, but there are also uh, w uh, relationships that the Erie County Department of Health has with our local judiciary, and that's why you see three members of them here today, because uh, if a home, if a residence is a danger to the individuals who live in them, there's only a certain amount of things that the Erie County Department of Health can do. It's up to the judiciary to go and actually enforce the laws that are on the books against the homeowners, uh, which often are landlords who are renting them to others. Uh, and so for many years now, the Erie County Department of Health has partnered with Buffalo City Court on lead prevention cases to ensure the safety of our residents, especially our youngest as residents. Uh, Judge Carney has a part of his housing court in which he goes after those that are in, have homes that are poisoning our youngest children. Unfortunately, there also is a backlog of lead cases, not necessarily those that affect the youngest children, but cases against landlords uh, who have premises that need to be remediated to meet the standards to ensure their homes are safe. Uh, backlogs that exist as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the work that's being done by the Department of Health, uh, and we wanted to ensure that these backlogs could be uh, addressed. So we're pleased to announce today that Buffalo City Court is uh, basically assigning many, all of those cases, approximately 600 of them, 650, to Judge Phil Dabney to move them along, some which have unfortunately sat there for years in city court so that we can go after the landlords and ensure that these houses that have been found deficient, unsafe, uh, actually are remediated and that these landlords pay the fines and do the work that's necessary to ensure that these homes are safe. Uh, so I want to thank our partners in the judiciary who you'll be hearing from very shortly for understanding the importance of this issue but also uh, putting an additional uh, a judge, city court judge, on this matter to ensure that these cases are not sitting in a backlog somewhere uh, but are actually being addressed and the landlords or the owners of the property are held responsible under the law as they need to be to ensure a safe uh, place for people to reside. So uh, I specifically want to thank uh, Judge Jahar Pridgen from Buffalo City Court and Judge Phil Dabney 
as well as, of course, uh, Judge Kevin Carter for their work in ensuring that we have a process in place to swiftly address issues associated with lead poisoning and lead prevention of homes in our region. And I think it's important to note, uh, there are a lot of folks who are working on this issue every day from the Erie County Department of Health, and you'll hear a lot more about that from our, our Health Commissioner, Dr. Gail Burstein. Uh, but as I said, there's only so much that they can do, and then we need to have our partners in the judiciary take the next step to ensure that these individuals are held responsible. And, and I want to thank the members of the judiciary for understanding the importance of this issue and, and doing that, ensuring that these cases are uh, moved quickly rather than sit there for a number of years so that no child should happen to move into a residence because their parents move there and their parents don't know that that residence is a danger potentially to that children's child's health. So by eliminating this backlog, we're going to ensure that more of these residents are actually addressed, uh, that they are remediated, and they're safe for uh, future tenants who may come there. Uh, and I also want to talk about, uh, and Dr. Burstein will talk about, this is in concert with two major grants that Erie County is receiving, a grant of nearly $2 million a year for five years, a little about $9.6 million, to implement a rental registry program in Erie County under the recently passed New York State law that requires a rental registry for all homes in our region. Uh, they were specifically going to target areas of concern, uh, which are approximately 15 zip codes. The vast majority of them are all in the city of Buffalo or the town of Cheektowaga. And this will allow us to get into more homes to determine the safety of those homes. And then we are also receiving a $4 million grant uh, from New York State as well on a lead prevention pilot program that will help us remediate homes in our region, spending on average of up to fourteen dollars to $15,000 per home to ensure that these houses are safe for people to live in in the future. Uh, we have a proud history in our community, a community that goes back uh, actually, yesterday was the 203rd birthday of Erie County alone, <laughs> so happy birthday, Erie County. Uh, but we have a proud history that goes back a, lo a long time. We also have a lot of homes that go back a long time, too. And if they go back to pre-1977, there's a very good chance they have lead paint on the walls. And we want to ensure that those places are safe for all of our residents to reside, especially the youngest residents. And so we're very proud that we're able to get these grants from New York State uh, to do the work to ensure that these homes are taken care of but especially proud to be here today with the members of the judiciary to move along the process of many of the cases that unfortunately have sat there for years to ensure that the homes in the city of Buffalo are safe for people to live in. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our Health Commissioner, Dr. Gail Burstein, to talk a little bit more about this program as well as the grants, and then turn it over to the members of the judiciary as well. So, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we know that, um, thank you, County Executive, and uh, you know, we all know that lead is a poison and it really snatches away our children's future. So this is a sinister, insidious, and uh, all too common public health threat. It can be in the air uh, it, that children breathe, it can be in the food that children eat, and it's really ever present in the spaces that we all think are healthy for children. It's actually in their homes. So we are so glad that we're joined here today by representatives of the Buffalo City Court. And today's announcement is the culmination of behind the scenes work to put this new systems in place. And for our public health perspective, systems changes have the strongest, most lasting impacts and po of, uh, on positive changes. And we're so grateful that this initiative is starting this month. And so there are actually two sides of the lead prevention coin. So one is education and prevention efforts. And we really need a better part of the afternoon to really highlight everything that we're doing at the Erie County Health Department on prevention and education. And so um, I encourage everybody, if they want to learn more, go to our website at www.erie.gov lead for all that great information. But the other side of the coin that is also important is enforcement and accountability. And so this court's existence and operation will make it very clear to these landlords and property owners that they have responsibilities to maintain, to maintain safe living spaces for Erie County residents. And that's a basic expectation that this, one, this court will emphasize in their work. So how is this lead court going to work? 
Well, lead-based violations pre-1978 housing in the city of Buffalo are documented by our public health sanitarians. Many of them are here. And um, these are uh, come to us through uh, referrals from uh, community partners, our uh, housing-based programs uh, like our Healthy Neighborhoods program, and from um, complaints um, that we uh, go out and inspect. So uh, the goal of this work is to find lead hazards before they result in exposing and poisoning our children. Uh, and so uh, um, these cases um, actually that are going to be heard in this court do not involve children. Um, this is primary prevention. So, it's, uh, so what we're trying to do is remove the lead from these homes before children get poisoned by lead. So this is, again, primary prevention. So um, the good thing is that um, you know, we're not in a rush to um, hurry up and remediate the homes because there aren't children in those homes that are getting poisoned. Um, so this is going to give us more time um, and some flexibility to, um, for the landlords to understand like how to make the repairs um, and then to um, make the repairs, you know, work with trained contractors to get the work done. So we're able to give them more time, but not unlimited time. And um, violations are referred to the Buffalo City Court, which will now hear uh, them um, now hear uh, these um, you know these cases actually twice weekly, um, and um, and again these are going to start this month. So the great thing about the specialized lead court is that there'll be, as, um, it's not just about the violations. We're really going to be focusing on education and prevention. We're going to have um, available education materials, um, uh, referrals and options for uh, lead training classes, and connections to funding sources if, uh, if the landlords are eligible to make certain renovations and repairs possible for them. So enforcement does not just mean punishment or fines. Really, the goal of this court is to ensure safer homes and apartments free of lead poisoning sources. So we see lead poisoning cases in children throughout the county, but the, really the largest volume, 85% of our cases, are in the city of Buffalo. And so, um, so that's really why our lead uh, work here is focused in the city of Buffalo courts, and that's why it is so relevant and helpful for us. So we recognize that lead poisoning is part of a larger health equity issue relating to ho housing and environment. And there's, um, there's really no quick fix for this intractable problem like lead poisoning. And it's really a, a community health issue and um, it really requires community solutions. And that's why we wanna thank our judges here today for taking on this challenge and really being part of our community solution. So um, we want you all to leave here today with the understanding that there is no safe level of lead, um, especially for children. But um, we know that uh, lead is very harmful and um, you know, the higher the level, you know, the more harm there is. And so um, that's why it's really important to get this work done and get these houses remediated before children get exposed. So again, if you want to understand more about this problem, we have a lot of great information on our website at www.erie.gov lead. Or if you have any questions, you're worried about your own home, you know, you can call our environmental health office at 716-961-6800 to get some more information. So I'm going to turn it over to the county executive. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burstein. As was noted, uh, this is in addition to the work that's already being done by Buffalo City Court and the Housing Court Division. The cases that involve children have been moving along. Those are not uh, part of the backlog, but the backlog includes a lot of homes that actually uh, need work. There's no doubt about it and could be rented out. But we don't want them rented out until such time as they've been remediated. And so that's why we're very glad to be having this new partnership with the Buffalo City Court. And to speak on behalf of it from the judiciary, we have the head of Buffalo City Court, uh, Judge Jahar Prison. Judge? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I think Dr. Bernstein um, summed up the purpose of the court. We do have an independently run housing court that Judge Patrick Carney uh, presides over. But I'm very delighted for this partnership and thank you to our county executive um, for coming to the courts and allowing us to do this collaboration. As the doctor has already stated, we are going to have two specific dates 
that uh, the Honorable Judge Philip Dabney will be presiding over these cases. And ultimately, it is about having a safe community. Happy birthday to Erie County. Uh, thank you for pointing that out uh, to our county executive. But we are honestly delighted uh, to be able to assist in having these cases no longer due to the pandemic be a backlog in the courts. Thank you all. Thank you, Your Honor. As was noted, this is just part of a comprehensive uh, group of programs that we have to address the issue of lead paint in our community as in lead poisoning with children and others. Uh, as explained, we're receiving additional dollars, some substantial dollars from New York State to increase the programs that we have as well as to set up the lead registry. Uh, and that's to ensure that going forward, uh, lead poisoning is, is just, just doesn't exist anymore. Uh, we know in other communities across the United States, it's really not a problem because they were all built post-1978. But because our age of our, of our community, uh, it is going to be a problem until we can safely remediate all those homes. And, and everything that's being announced today is going to allow us to head towards that goal of ensuring we have a safe community for all. With that, I'll open up to any questions on topic. So when violations or cases do come before the court, which judge that will be Judge Dabney. He's specifically assigned to these cases, and we would be hearing them two days a week. That would be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But we still do have the housing court that will be handling the housing court matters. Okay. But how does it work right now currently? Does it go to housing court for lead violations? Uh, hello. In, in response to that question, the um, offenses or the cases are trickled directly to my part, part 14. Um, so they are housed, if you will, and um, processed through that court, that court only. How big is the backlog out there? Um, as already stated, um, it's, it's roughly um, in, the, in the range of 1,600 plus. 600 plus, yes, yes, yes. putting more work on myself than that. Uh, that was a slip, by the way, 600. <laughs> and, and how long roughly would it take to get through that many cases on this topic? Um, that's a good question. I think the system that we have in place allows for a certain number of cases to be called per session, and that's roughly 20, 15 to 20. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and this will continue until it's um, emptied out. Um, so uh, it's not to force them through, but it's certainly to bring about um, uh, some disposition on each one of them in a timely fashion with work plans in place in, in terms of rectifying um, what is a serious circumstance. So besides um, being in violation when they come before Good question. At the instance of the arraignment, what's handed to the accused um, or the respondents um, is a package of resources that are um, made available, readily available. Ideally, um, it would, um, it is our intention to have someone representative from those resources there on that date so that um, it's something that would encourage um, those who um, must attend court um, to have resources readily available beyond just merely the package that's provided to them. Um, so it's, it's certainly something more than just, um, it isn't primarily punitive. Um, it is, I believe, what um, Dr. Um, forgive me. Bernstein. Bernstein, forgive me. Um, Dr. Bernstein indicated um, it's, it's also accountability. Um, and we were just discussing this. So we had our first session yesterday, which um, in speaking with um, those who were staffed, uh, we thought it went uh, quite well um, in understanding um, how we must be uh, proactive, not aggressive, but proactive in requiring um, those to appear when they should, um, to understand that it is not, it's not going to the principal's office, so to speak, but it's, it's going to the resource office, um, addressing some of the concerns that, um, that have been cited 
and then providing measures and working towards a work plan and resolving those matters. If I can, one of the sort of Please. getting to your point of what yes, is offered to the individual, uh, one of the keys is to ensure that the house is properly remediated and you'll be able to take a look at what is actually done as our Department of Health Environmental Health team has across the, the hallway from here basically showing you how a setup is done to ensure that a, a building, a room is properly remediated. Uh, these are the trained experts. They deal with this every day. Uh, they are here to help folks. So they're not here just to be, uh, to, to punish a group or individual. They're here to, to, to help people uh, remediate their homes. Every year they actually work with hundreds and hundreds of homeowners to ensure that the homes are properly remediated. We have grant programs available to assist individuals who might not otherwise have the money to be able to buy the supplies. And as I noted, we're receiving a major grant from uh, New York State will allow us to go in and actually do the work being paid for under this grant by New York State. Uh, we, we, we don't want to necessarily punish individuals unless they are so egregious that they're refusing to follow court orders and the like. Our goal is to ensure that just homes are properly remediated so that they're safe and, and that's what the Department of Health does is to work uh, not just with our partners in the judiciary but our residents to ensure that their homes are safe. Are lead poisoning cases on the rise? You would know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah we're, um, we're, you know, we're always finding uh, new lead cases and now with, um, you know, the New York State requires all children uh, at one years and two years of age to be tested for lead. So, and most pediatricians have uh, the ability to test in their office, just a little finger prick and, um, and get the test done. So we, have, we are finding more lead cases and we can send you the data, um, you know, after, after this press conference. But it's, um, you know, it is a big health problem, you know, especially in the city of Buffalo. And we're working with pediatricians uh, to, um, you know, to help them manage. We have <coughs> nurses that are case managers that work with the families and make sure that they understand how to clean appropriately and the, um, have the appropriate diet for the children. And we do everything we can to bring those lead levels back down again. Judge Dabney, would you just specifically be handling lead poisoning cases or would you handle other matters as well, other criminal matters? Um, I'll continue with my regular calendar um, and the um, rotation of uh, various special terms as well as what I already said, my regular cr criminal calendar. This is an in, in addition to, so, um, but I will be the sole um, judge handling the specific, this specific assignment. And what are you going to look forward to in terms of real enforcement? If it's anything like housing court, you know, for those who have been in housing court, sometimes attorneys don't show up, uh, defendants, they don't show up, there's delays, things don't get resolved for years. What are you looking to actually try to accomplish and, and bring real progress on these cases? All right. Well, starting out with um, accountability. Accountability will begin with appearing in court. Um, so we had the opportunity to speak with staffing yesterday and revisiting even how we summons, uh, summon those individuals to appear. Um, it's not merely a um, uh, you're being summoned to appear and, uh, and if you don't appear then we'll reach out to you again to come appear. No, there'll be some um, required skin in the game, if you will. But, um, it could result in um, circumstances of a warrant or even a default judgment um, where there are circumstances um, of uh, uh, work that um, has failed to be done that has brought about um, some type of um, cost um, that should be realized by the landlord if he's failing to appear, having the opportunity to be um, noticed to appear and fails to do so, then he could be confronted with not merely um, a challenge to his freedom, but also a hit to his pocket due to his default in, in showing. So a couple of um, um, uh, measures can, we, we can undertake that we're working out, but most, um, more, uh, most importantly is just bring about the, um, the atmosphere of accountability as to each of the um, homeowners here in Buffalo. And how can people who you know, want to get on this list, want to get their homes uh, checked for this and you know, in the line for the court system here report that their home you know, needs remediation? 
I'd like to direct that actually to right. one of the. Um, Wait, if um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you for that question. So the um, if people have concerns about um, lead in their home, uh, a couple of things they can do. Um, first of all, we have a. Um, if your home was built before 1978, there's a very very high chance that you do have some type of lead-based paint in your home. Um, if you're not sure when your house was built, we actually have a registry that you can find on our uh, health department uh, environmental health website to um, you can enter your address and uh, look up actually when your home was built so you'll know if you're before or after that 1978 break and if you have any concerns you want your home um, you know, checked out again you can call our environmental health office and 716-961-6800 uh, uh, and, uh, and you know talk to uh, in a sanitarian and uh, we can come and uh, inspect your home and you know give you some good pointers also, um, I want to encourage you, uh, after we stop filming, to um, go across the hall and um, look at the, uh, all the great training resources that we have for um, homeowners and uh, property owners hand and landlords um, to uh, actually learn how to uh, remediate your home in, during, with lead safe practices. And actually, there's uh, for um, contractors, uh, there is a specific certification that they need to, to obtain to be able to do this work. And, you know, we we offer the training to do that. So we're, um, you know, again, we're all about uh, prevention and um, ed education and providing resources. And again, if people can't afford it, um, we work, we have grants um, to work with uh, Belmont Housing to, to be able to uh, help um, people, you know, pay for uh, those repairs that need to be made because, um, you know, a child's brain is priceless. Thank you. What were those grant amounts again and specifically what were they being used for? Do you want me to? Well, yeah, if you want, uh, here's, here's two. I'll leave it up to the doctor to more <laughs> properly describe the programs. Thanks. Um, so yeah, so we have a um, you know a, a, a couple of programs um, that is uh, generous uh, funding from the New York State Health Department. So one, I'm just getting out my cheat sheet, is the. Um, uh, we, um, so we have our the lead rental registry. So again, that is going to be a registry that is going to be required for um, homeowners in the the um, you know 14 high risk zip codes to um, be able to to they have for them to participate in. And so they'll have to be inspected. Their homes will, and properties will have to be inspected um, every three years for um, for lead. So now we'll be able to get into more homes. So um, so we are actually have a grant for 9.6 million dollars over five years and this is basically going to pay for um, a, a greater workforce of uh, sanitarians to uh, to do this work so we're hoping to um, if we get approved by the legislature we're going to be able to hire 12 sanitarian and two clerks to um, to be able to uh, to do this work because there will be a lot more inspections and you will have a lot more business I think <laughs> sure um, and then um, so but it's not just about inspection it's you know it's also about doing the repairs right because that's the end game so um, New York State is also um, providing us with a grant that we're hoping the legislature will approve for us to accept called leading in lead prevention pilot program so this is uh, a little over four point it's a little about four point two million dollars um, from New York State and um, that will um, help give us um, financial resources to be able to partner with uh, Belknap Housing Resources for Western New York um, and this will help us with, you know, get, um, for them to do the inspections and do the assessments, see what repairs need to be done and um, to be able to uh, pay for all those uh, repairs for up to $34,000 uh, per unit. So, um, so these are some great resources we're really excited and, um, to receive and thank for the New York State, uh, for New York State to giving us these resources. So thanks. I just have one more question for the judge too about you know how many of these <laughs> how many cases how many of these cases do you see a session and you know how much do you expect this to increase since this led court you know becoming more of a focus for you? Well, again, this is addressing a backlog, um, so um, I'm inclined. And having um, specific time designated to just these cases to load them, um, load them up on those those days. Um, I believe yesterday we had scheduled 20, um, and it was day one. 
Um, so, you know, working out some of the kinks in terms of making people aware that it's not county court, city court, um, making certain that um, uh, they are abreast of their rights, um, that they, if they wish, they bring attorneys. Um, getting all the players in play sometimes can sort of slow the process down. Um, but if we were to use uh, yesterday as a marker, um, I would suspect that we would probably see maybe, um, maybe 15 total um, per week of those who will attend. And it's important also to note that um, the, the idea is not to sort of um, kick the ball down the road. Um, I'm requiring uh, immediate um, return dates um, and with specific um, plans as to what we intend to cover the next court date. Um, if there is need for counsel, um, they're being advised to stay in communication um, uh, with um, the, um, the county until counsel is involved, but to have counsel contact the court immediately. Um, we want to make certain that there's nothing that will slow the process down. And um, so we're going 15 to 30 days out after the first appearance. Um, and we're looking to have that time quite useful in putting together a work plan and putting together, educating um, many of the homeowners as to what's available, what they should take advantage of, and that they should take advantage of it to um, reduce any legal jeopardy that they may um, be confronted with by having these violations. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. Thank you for all being here. I certainly thank, and once again, our, our friends from the judiciary, Judge Carter, Judge Prision, Judge Dabney, for understanding the significance of this issue and working with our Department of Health to come up with a really good solution. Uh, thank you to Judge Dabney for taking on additional work. <laughs> as, as someone who practiced law a long time ago, but occasionally would show up in city court, it is not the easiest court to manage because there's so much that goes on. I'm under good leadership, though, for the, uh, <laughs> Carter and Judge Prigent. So, so thank you. Uh, and for, uh, of course, our members of the media, please, uh, you'll be, if you want to go across the hall, uh, Jennifer Delaney and her team from the Department of Health's Environmental Health Division will show you how we actually remediate a home that has a letter problem. Thanks, all. Thanks. And uh, Peter Anderson has a handout for you that will be helpful. Thank you. You're welcome.